Sign up for the free Wager Talk Text Club to gain access to free plays and exclusive discounts. Just text Wager Talk to 33222 to sign up and get a $10 coupon to use on wagertalk.com. <clears throat> All right, guys, welcome back in here on this Thursday. Time for us to take a look here at a little college football, college football daily powered by wagertalk.com. We got a game tonight. We've got uh, three games over the weekend we're going to break down for you. A couple of best bets at the end, and we welcome in three of the finest at wagertalk.com, college football, NFL, NHL. You got a whole lot covered here on this panel today. Ralph Michaels uh, sitting in the number one spot. Teddy right in the heart of the order. And, of course, Dave Koken hitting cleanup here for you guys as we're treated. Uh, we had a little match in this week. Now we get a little Thursday night uh, football as well. And, uh, Ralph, what's uh, what's been going on? What do you got going on at wagertalk.com right now? We know college basketball. What else is happening for you? Uh, you know, I just posted a couple of free plays in basketball, and if you guys tune into the college basketball show, you'll see my top play for today. So check that out. Uh, I do want to mention it here on the show, although we're talking college football. Uh, please do check out the college basketball guide, wagertalk.com, Ralph Michaels page, or wt.buzz backslash rm. Uh, it'll at least give you a, a quick makeup of what the team might look like and some stats and numbers and rankings. So Please check it out. Put a lot of work into it. Hope you enjoy it. All right. Good stuff, guys. Visit Ralph's page there. Go ahead and download that guide as well. And Teddy Covers uh, joining us. Uh, so damn profitable. You can find him also at sportsmemo.com. There you got enough room for him at Wager Talk with all those winners. Teddy, what's going on, my man? What do you got uh, locked and loaded here for us tonight? Well, unfortunately, this week has not been one of the profitable weeks. Uh, to put it mildly, I'm uh, uh, stinking up the joint all week. That being said, uh, college football has been good for most of the season, uh, and we're putting together the card. Everything will be posted, as always, by Friday uh, by 9 a.m. Pacific time. NFL already locked and loaded for Sunday, so you can get those plays right now over at WagerTalk and or SportsMemo.com. All right, good stuff here. And uh, Dave Koken, 5% best bet in college football, guys. They don't come around often, but when they do... Some of the most profitable bets you will find at Wager Talk over the last couple of years. Uh, great night in college basketball, Dave. Off to a hell of a start. NHL continuing to roll, my friend. What else is happening at Wager Talk? Yeah, and I had a very good Sunday in the NFL, so happy with that. Um, a note on college basketball. Uh, I'm only selling the, the daily packages, only selling 4% or better plays, 4% or 5%. Mostly 4%, obviously. Anything less than that is going to be free. Just follow me on Twitter at Dave Koken, and I will post when the plays are available. And then you just go to my Wager Talk homepage, and you'll get any 2% or 3% plays uh, on the house. So I want to make everybody some money this year in college basketball. I think that's one way to do it. Do a big college football game on, Sun on uh, Saturday. Uh, and uh, I like the card. I got six games going on Saturday. I did lose with Bowling Green. It's the only loser I had last night. I, I have not been good in the MAC this year, and I think I might be done with that conference for the season. But uh, enthused about the card this weekend, and uh, let's see what happens. All right, I think Kent State's done well. Also, all right, guys, there we go. Uh, Action to the side. We do have a hell of a game here tonight. So why don't we start in the ACC tonight? Let's see it, Robert. What do we got? Ah, North Carolina taking on uh, Pitt and one of the worst scheduling spots ever for UNC here. Minus six is an open for Pitt. This has climbed uh, to a touchdown in some spots, 75 and a half as a total here. North Carolina not good away from Chapel Hill this year, Ralph, and uh, coming off a uh, an emotional win against Wake Forest. Now it's a short week. Now they got to take on another ridiculous offense. So what do you think about uh, UNC's chances here tonight? Uh, I don't think they're very good. And, you know, you had mentioned the scheduling spot. Joe, do you mean that uh, your defense being on the field for 99 plays against Wake Forest and then having to play a short week against one of the best offenses <laughs> in college football is a bad scheduling spot? Completely agree. The total of 72 seems pretty high, but, you know, it's, it's clearly – 
you know, I, I'm looking at Pittsburgh, and I would have to lean the over as well. You know, you have a defense allowing 7.7 .7 yards per play and 7.0 uh, yards with North Carolina's offense did. The defense 7.7 .7 and allowing 6.8. Those are just astronomical numbers. So the clear reason I, I lean with Pittsburgh in this is you look at North Carolina's O-line. It has not been good. They allowed six sacks against Virginia Tech, eight sacks against Georgia Tech, five sacks against Duke, four against Miami of Florida, three against Notre Dame, three against Wake Forest. This Pitt team is one of the best teams in the country in sacks. You look at their defensive sack percentage, it's 10.2. That means one out of every 10 times the quarterback goes back to pass, he gets sacked. That matchup is a mismatch for me. Lean the pit side, and again, over is the only way I could go in this game this evening. All right, looking at the over there, and to be fair, Ralph, uh, UNC's defense hasn't been on the field at all this year. Who are we kidding? Teddy, um, talk to me here tonight. Is it as simple as the best defense wins, given what we know about these two offenses? Well, it's not like Pitt's defense is great. <laughs> all, no. all right. I, I remember Western. I cast a 5% with Western Michigan when Western Michigan went in there and, and beat them and hung 44 on the Panthers, and that's not the only time uh, this year this defense has been gashed. And I can understand the concept. North Carolina coming off a big win, playing on a short week, knocking off an undefeated team, and now in a difficult, in theory, <laughs> spot. I don't know that I buy it for the Tar Heels. This has been an underachieving team this season. All right. They showed last week offensively what they're capable of doing. I don't see Pitt stopping them. And in a game where... Whoever has the ball last is, li is live to win and or cover. I don't want to lay a touchdown. So uh, I would not be surprised at all if the Tar Heels hang around in this game. I'm not convinced that North Carolina is not the better of these two teams. So uh, I'd be taking the points in this one, not laying them. And I'm pretty sure I'm against uh, my other two panelists on this one. Oh, all right. Somebody going the other way. Dave, what do you think? How are you, uh, how are you looking at this game tonight? No, I'm, I'm playing the spot, and if it doesn't get there, that's the way it goes. But we're in the type of the time of season where the the spot to me is the overriding factor. You just assume the power ratings are correct on the teams. I think they are here. Pittsburgh deserves to be the favorite, maybe not by quite this much. The odds makers did factor in the spot and boosted the line a couple of points, but that to me is an indicator of what they think is going to happen, and I agree. It's not just that North Carolina beat a rival last week. It's the way they did it. I mean, that was an enormous comeback. It's one of the biggest comebacks of the season. They were down 18 in the third quarter. They were still down 14 in the fourth quarter. Came back and won the game, and you'd have thought they just won the national championship because it was the crowd emptied. They were all over the field. I mean, it's, that's one of those big celebration wins over a rival, spoiling Wake Forest season. I think was a, a real cool thing for North Carolina. And I just don't know how excited they're going to be about this, especially on a short week. And it's a much bigger game for Pittsburgh. Now, that doesn't mean Pittsburgh's going to win. Okay? They're not a sure thing. Narduzzi's not my favorite coach to lay points with, I can tell you that. And, you know, it's not going to shock me if North Carolina goes in and plays well tonight. But the spot clearly favors Pittsburgh. And I am a spot player at this time of year. So I'm in the Panthers minus the points. All right, Panthers minus the points. It is here, guys. A little Thursday night football, and Ralph is pointing at us, which means he's going to yell at us. Yes, Ralph. Uh, no, I just, you know, Dave brought up the point about coming back for that big, big lead. I just looked at the database while Dave was talking. Uh, teams off a home win when they trail by 17 or more at the half. Only 7-14 and 14 against the spread, 33% in the 21 times it's happened in the last 12 years. Wow. Okay. Good stuff there. Uh, key number of 38 here, guys, uh, appears to be for North Carolina as well. If they score at least that many points, they don't lose. So we'll see what happens here tonight. Let's head to the weekend here, guys, and take a look at uh, Notre Dame, Virginia, I believe here. Is that right, Robin? Yes, it is. Notre Dame taking on the Cavaliers here. This game opens up with Virginia being a dog at home here. Four and a half is an open. Uh, the total 
64 and a half as well. And interesting game. You know, Teddy, you forget Notre Dame, it, with everything else going on, Notre Dame's only got one loss. Uh, and uh, the more Cincinnati wins, the uh, the more that loss is eh, it's not, as, not as devastating as some might think here. What do you think of their chances going on the road, taking care of business here against Virginia? Well, I talked about a good 5% big ticket that I had Western Michigan against Pitt. I'm going to talk about a bad 5% big ticket. Last time Virginia was uh, was on the field, uh, I took them plus the points at BYU, thinking that Brennan Armstrong was going to move the ball up and down the, the field against that uh, Cougars defense, and he did. Unfortunately, <laughs> the fourth quarter was uh, turnover, touchdown, 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 screw up, touchdown, um, and Virginia went from a four-point lead to a 17-point loss. They had the bye week. Armstrong's still a bet on QB in every sense of the word right now. This guy is on fire. Um, And I don't know that even Notre Dame is going to be shutting down Virginia's passing offense. That said, it's pretty clear that the Cavaliers aren't going to stop good teams from moving the football. We've seen that in, it feels like, every game they played against a good team this season. You know, uh, we think of Hall as a defensive-minded coach, yes, but this is not a defense that's loaded with talent on any of the three levels. You know, the linebackers are slow. The secondary has been getting burned. The defensive line uh, isn't getting all that much of a push on a consistent basis. So I like the over in this ballgame. Virginia, as strong an over team as you can find right now in college football. The offense is really good. The defense, not so much. And I think Notre Dame likely to put up points in bunches in this one. Uh, if the Irish can get stops, they'll cover. If they can't, they won't. Over might be the best bet of the bunch. All right. Currently, uh, guys, I believe, seeing 64s uh, in places in the marketplace. Uh, five even, uh, Dave, uh, for the side here. Uh, Consistency is interesting here. I know Notre Dame had some issues at the quarterback spot. Was it con? Was it not? But what do you think, uh, ever since that loss to Cincinnati, have you liked what you've seen from Notre Dame? Uh, I bet you Brian Kelly wishes they could play that one over again now. Because Notre Dame's improving. <laughs> Notre Dame's getting better. Uh, the offensive line, which was not good early in the season, has gotten a lot better. It's not great, but it's, it's serviceable now. Uh, the defense is, is strong. I, I like the way Notre Dame's playing. Uh, the ACC really sucks this year. It's the worst I've ever seen that conference. And I've already made my mind up that, I mean, obviously we'll have to see what the matchups are. But this is a conference I'll be probably looking to fade come bowl time because it's still got a decent reputation, but it's just a bad league this year. The normal powerhouse is Clemson. They're not very good. I mean, they're not a horrible team, but they're, they're not what Clemson has typically been. and. You know, the mere fact that Wake Forest, and I don't mean to, to insult Wake Forest here, but the mere fact that Wake Forest was looking like the team that might win the entire ACC kind of speaks volumes about where the ACC is this year. It's just not a very good league. I think Notre Dame's better than Virginia. It comes down to that. Um, I think the Irish will find a way to win the game by a touchdown, maybe more. All right, good stuff there. Ralph, uh, they certainly have uh, looked a part here in Notre Dame. We kind of forget they're only a one-loss team here, but uh, enough consistency uh, from Virginia to make you want to back them? Well, yes, Notre Dame has looked better. But, you know, you look at the you look at USC, they win 31-16. They got outgained by 41 yards. You look at North Carolina, yes, they win by 10. They got outgained by 41 yards. Yes, they beat Navy 34 to 6. Navy used, loses their starting quarterback up 3 0 in the first quarter, and they completely shut him down after that. So I'm not convinced they're that much better. I, I can tell you what, I, I agree with the over, but to me, I am waiting. Um, the important thing is Brennan Armstrong got hurt against BYU. They thought it was yep. going to be a more serious ribs on, on his ribs. He has not practiced at all in two weeks. Mendenhall yesterday at his press conference said not only is he day by day, he's hour by hour, he's minute by minute. We won't know until the game kicks off is he's going to be our starting quarterback. Now, he may be being ploy, but as of yesterday, Brandon Armstrong has not practiced with the ones. He's just doing mental practices on the side, 
going through the playbook. That concerns me with this team. So even though I lean the over, for me, it's a no play because you either could have a banged up quarterback or, or, um, or Bronco may, may just be playing sly, but it's enough to keep me off the game. All just right. a quick Thanks. thought. Go I, ahead. You know, I, I'm not – look, it's not like Virginia is going to win anything important this year. They're not going to a major bowl or anything like that. I'm not sure he sends him out there unless he's close to 100%. I mean, I know – oh, it's Notre Dame. It's a big game. It's actually a bigger game for Notre Dame than it is for Virginia. And, you know, you got a potential NFL quarterback out there uh, for Virginia. And Bronco knows that. I don't think he's going to play him unless he's really good to go, which is another reason I obviously lean to the Notre Dame side here. Okay, well, excellent me, but... point, and I, and I completely spazzed out. I had it in my notes because mm-hmm. if they win their next two games, they win the ACC because they're at yeah. Pittsburgh and play Virginia Tech. So, yes, oh. it's Notre Dame, and yes, it's ABC, and yes, it's Saturday night, but they have a chance to still go to the Orange Bowl and win the ACC by winning out the season. So, great point. Right. Those get the the ACC games are bigger. Yeah. Armstrong is a, I think he's a Heisman candidate. All right. I might even vote for him right now for the Heisman trophy, a national TV win over, over, and if you look at his stats, his stats absolutely merit it, but no one's paying any attention to him. Uh, A big national TV win over Notre Dame. All of a sudden, maybe he gets invited uh, to Manhattan and the downtown athletic club for the Heisman Trophy presentation, and that is worth a lot to a program like Virginia. Well, Just yeah, but at the same time, at the same time, if he's hurt, yeah. I don't think I don't think I don't think he's gonna I don't think Broncos gonna take a chance on him being out for the season and damaging his draft status. I mean, the Heisman's all well and good, but you know I think you got to protect your players. So we'll see. I mean, yep. the hmm. fact that Ralph mentioned he hasn't been practicing with the ones. That's most of these times when it's day to day and hour to hour, guy ends up not playing. So mm. I think that's still part of the reason the line is, is where it is. Yep. He's still listed as questionable, certainly on the, uh, on the injury report right now, but uh, we'll see how it goes there. Notre Dame, Virginia, the two guys uh, throwing the ball tonight, Teddy, too. They've, they might, uh, they got an opportunity oh. to uh, elevate themselves in that Heisman watch as well. We'll see what happens. Uh, but in the meantime, we got to go to the SEC. Huge game going on there this weekend. Let's check it out, Robert. How about Texas A&M traveling to Ole Miss here, taking it on uh, Ole Miss, 3-2 uh, in the conference here. Texas A&M, uh, ever since that uh, win for, uh, against Alabama there, has been – Man, they got a little bit of momentum going, a little better quarterback play. They run the ball, great defense. Now they got to go up against a really good offense here, Dave. And the total, uh, almost a pick them at the open, 53 and a half is a total, which is a little low for an old Miss game here. What do you think we're going to see from these two teams? Well, it's low because A&M's got a really good defense. <clears throat> and you know, they're shutting teams down. That was an impressive performance last week in which Calzada got banged up. Uh, and, and look, a and not going to wow anybody with their offense. If this turns into a shootout, they're not going to win. But and this is just old school for me. Uh, and I, I know I say this all the time, but when it's real good defense against real good offense, I still tend to value the defense more. Maybe that's old school thinking that some might find archaic, but A&M finds ways to shut opposing defenses, uh, opposing offenses down. And I think they've got a good chance to do it here. This is not a game I want to play. I think it's a really tough game. I think the odds makers made it difficult with, by putting the line where it is. But it's a, it's one of those when push comes to shoves deals. Um, I'll go with the better defense, and that's A and M. But it's a real weak call. It's a it's an interesting matchup here, uh, Dave, isn't it? Though with uh, with Corral a quarterback. Uh, Kiffin, uh, a lot of guys uh, were taken out in the second half, made Liberty uh, and that game a little bit closer than it probably needed to be. Um, so what do you think here? Is it uh, Texas A&M for you? You said Dave. Are you coming to me, Joe? Um, I, Ralph. I'm sorry, Ralph. Yes, Ralph. Well, Ralph. you know, we, we look so much alike. We look so yeah. much alike. It's very easy for <laughs> Joe to get Dave, confused. Dave, a good-looking one with more hair than you. So, um, <laughs> I don't know about that. Uh, I am going. 
I am going to say this. I don't care how good your defense is. If you have Zach Calzada on the road, let's look at a and schedule. Who have they played on the road this year? One team. They've gone to Missouri. That's it. That's his only experience. What has Calzada done the last three weeks? 13 of 25 at Missouri, a 2-1 ratio. 12 of 24 at home against South Carolina. 15 of 29 at home against Auburn. He is exactly 50%. You now take that on the SEC road with a crowd that is an animated crowd. I don't think he does move the ball. I like the old Miss offense here. I think they can score more against the, the A&M defense than the A&M offense with Kazada can score against an old Miss defense that we know isn't great. You know, and yes, they gave a 457 to Liberty and 483 against Auburn. And you compare Auburn as common opponents, A&M does look much better, but... <laughs> I match up the offense to this defense and this defense to the offense. To me, I'm going to back the home team. So it's interesting, too, Ted. I believe uh, college game day will be in Oxford here for this one. Going to be a ton of hype uh, for uh, Lane Kiffin. I think it's the first time since 2014 when Lane Kiffin was the offensive coordinator for Alabama when they played there. So what do you think? A lot of hype for this Ole Miss team. Can you back them? Well, there's been a couple of things said. I think you said one and Ralph said another. We got to talk about the reality of Ole Miss right now, okay? This team hasn't scored more than 31 points in a month since the uh, Arkansas game, all right? They've flown under the total each of their last four games by 25 and a half, 28 and a half, 15 and a half, 26 and a half, uh, all right? So I'm not just squeaking them out. Each one of them, more than two touchdowns under the spread, the total outcome never in doubt. There's two parts to that equation. One, remember that game where Corral had 30 rushing attempts against Tennessee? <laughs> he hasn't been the same yeah. quarterback since. He's thrown two touchdown passes in three games since. All right, he got banged up in that game, and he hasn't been the same. So the offense is working that well. Meanwhile, it's an Ole Miss defense, and I spent, oh, I remember the whole offseason, everyone's telling me how great Ole Miss defense is going to be because they brought in all these transfers. This guy transferred it. That guy transferred it. And that wasn't the case early. That defense has been real good the last couple of weeks. And I know they gave up yards, but they're not giving up points. And the yards per point has been very good uh, for Ole Miss. We know what A&M's defense is capable of doing. Heck, you know, they held Auburn to a field goal last week, and the Tigers hadn't been held out of the end zone in the last decade. Um, so we've got two good defenses. A quarterback in Calzada I don't trust, and a quarterback in Corral who hasn't been the same. Yeah, under is the way I'm looking in this one. Let's not forget that A&M has also cashed a bevy of unders this season, six of them. And all six unders for A&M that they've cashed in their nine games, all six of them came by double-digit margin. So, again, you weren't sweating, worrying about the half point. The betting markets have been overvaluing these teams' total. They're overpricing these teams' totals basically all year. I think there's value on the under. All right. Hey, Joe, I at, want to bring up yeah, one more. I'm sorry. Teddy, are you looking at the Wager Talk college football logs when you're really oh, no. at those? <laughs> you bet um, I am. <laughs> you know, one thing I want you to look at, which I didn't even notice looking, look over at Old Miss at the turnovers this, this year. They have not, they have been even or won the turnover battle in every game. So they're where no. they are with their wins with ever, without losing any turnovers. So we'll see what happens. If they do turn their ball over or have a negative turnover ratio, they may be the only team. I'm going to look at the logs later and tweet it out. But I don't know of any other team that has not lost the turnover battle in any game this season. All right, good stuff there, guys. All right, we got one more game here we're going to break down for you. And, uh, boy, this is going to, be, going to be interesting in the SEC. Let's see it, Robert. Yep, number one, Georgia taking on uh, Tennessee here. A uh, total of 54, which is interesting. 20 and a half uh, as an open uh, for Georgia there on the road with the favorite, obviously a well-deserved favorite. But, uh, Dave, I'll come back to you because there's an awful lot of people that uh, thought Tennessee was much improved here this year uh, with Hooker at quarterback. And uh, listen, for three quarters, they were, well, three and a half quarters, they were fantastic against Alabama. But I think we can all agree this Georgia defense is not like anything that they've seen yet this year. So do you trust Tennessee to cover? No, no. Um, look, uh, Tennessee is improved. 
Heupel's done a really good job there. That program is is back Ooh. on the rise again. But uh, I, I, I keep on getting Georgia games to talk about every week. So I'll just keep repeating what I've been saying all year. I'm not betting against Georgia, period. I'm not going to lay it here. Um, Tennessee is playing good football. They're going to be all fired up for the game. But I will not be met betting against Georgia. Uh, same, same rationale as I've said, I don't know, for the past five or six weeks. If the best I can do is try to beat Georgia, uh, I might be better taking the day off. It, it really is next level, Teddy, isn't it? I mean, what Georgia's, that defense has done this year, it is it is just that much better than, than what we've seen. And uh, Tennessee, is this the offense that maybe can find a few cracks in it? So Georgia has faced Clemson, UAB, South Carolina, Bandy, Arkansas, Auburn, Kentucky, Florida, and Missouri. In those nine games, They've given up a grand total of five <laughs> offensive touchdowns. <laughs> that it's, it's, is impressive. And, of course, they've gone under each of the last five weeks uh, for Georgia. We talk about tired defenses. Tennessee's defense, you know, their offense was incredible last week <laughs> against Kentucky. Didn't take them any time to score. They were on the field for, what, 13 minutes and change, which means the defense was on the field for 99 plays and 46 and a half minutes on the heels of being on the field for 92 plays against Alabama and 101 plays against Ole Miss in their previous game. I'm not convinced that Tennessee's defense has anything left in the tank. <laughs> At the same time, Georgia hasn't seen this, any team that is going to run a blur offense like Heupel's running right now. It's, it's one of these, can we take a leap of faith and expect Tennessee to get something against the defense that's only given up five PDs all year? I think we can. And I think this game ends up getting up and over the total. All these Georgia unders come to an end on Saturday. I like the over in this one. Over it is. Now, Ralph, two questions for you. Um, number one, Teddy brings up a good point. Josh Heupel, let's go fast, but. That could lead to a lot of three and outs. I, I I don't know. Do you think that that's the best way to go about it if you're Tennessee? And, oh, yeah, is this the best offense that Georgia's seen yet this year? Oh, God, it's not even close. And I have no problems with Dave's statement and not going against Georgia. But I do like Tennessee here. And, you know, Teddy, Teddy listed the teams that they've played. Well, let me tell you the offensive rankings. Clemson 112, Vandy 78, South Carolina 108, Vanderbilt 22, Auburn 79, Kentucky 73, Missouri number 40. He's only faced two top 40 offenses, and both were at home or in a neutral setting. Georgia's played, you know, at Vandy, at Auburn. This is now a road game against a legitimate offense. Georgia's offense, you look at what they've done on the road. Auburn, 22 first downs, 34 points, Vanderbilt. Yeah, 62 points. I, I have no problems with Teddy's statement as well, saying it is amazing that Tennessee, in their last three games, the defense has played 101 plays, 92 plays, and 99 plays. What Teddy didn't mention was after Alabama, they had a bye. So they've only they had a bye week, and then they played Kentucky. This is only their second game since that rest. Yeah, it's not going to make my card. But I do have a definite lean with Tennessee. Do I think Georgia can get to 40 against Tennessee's defense? Maybe. Do I think Tennessee can get to 20 against Georgia's defense? I obviously do because that's the opinion you I'm giving on the Tennessee Volunteers. All right. They're up to 20 now, it looks like, in many spots there. And uh, right there. Stetson Bennett, they seem to uh, – they seem to – Kirby seems to like him, thinks uh, he's the guy to go with here. Dave, do you agree? Yeah, he's just a better game. I mean, uh, Daniels has more upside, but Daniels makes mistakes. Bennett's a, Bennett's a really good game manager, and all Georgia wants to do is just not screw up. Uh, don't give the ball away because their defense is so good. Uh, basically, they're not going to, if they take care of the football, they can't lose. Good stuff there, guys. All right, Georgia taking on Tennessee. That leads us, of course. To our, uh, our best bet section here, we'll take a look at these games, see if there uh, might be one that these guys are leaning towards a little bit more than the other. And, Ralph, 
We're coming to you here, my friend. Don't forget, guys, make sure you visit Ralph at wagertalk.com. College basketball underway. The guide is there. Free download at his page right now, along with his best bets. So, Ralph, uh, which one of these games are you leaning towards a little more than the others? It's simple. The only one I have a definite opinion on is Old Miss. Uh, I think they handle it. Uh, Teddy's points are well taken with the Old Miss offense not being what they are. So the year-to-date numbers are sort of tainted. But, uh, you know, I am going to – I, I want to see A&M with their quarterback situation go on the road and beat this team, and I just don't see that happening. All right, there you go. Old Miss and uh, Teddy, guys, again, you can visit them at wagertalk.com as well as – uh, sportsmemo.com. Uh, his stuff will be up uh, locked and loaded here. College football, uh, NBA guys, NFL right there at wagertalk.com. And Teddy, which one of these games might you be leaning at? So I don't know if you guys remember that, unless you're watching the game, you probably wouldn't. Uh, but when Tennessee played Alabama, the Vols were down by 21 in the fourth quarter. They had been a competitive game and then it kind of got away from them a little bit and Heupel went for it down 21 from I think it was inside his own 30 and they didn't make it and then Alabama scored that one last touchdown as a result to cover the point spread that's one more reason why I like Georgia Tennessee over even with that Bulldogs defense being as good as it's been Ralph talked about the weakness of many of the offenses that they faced I think Tennessee is going to get to 20 here, and who knows how many Georgia is going to get to. So, yeah, I like the over between the Bulldogs and the Balls over 55 and a half slash 56, the current prevailing numbers. Yeah, if I remember correctly, I had Tennessee plus 27. That was really exciting to yeah, watch that. It was brutal. Uh, t- <laughs> oh, it was brutal. He's right. Uh, Dave Coton, guys, 5% best bet in college football is up, and it's ready to go. Uh, you hard pressed to find so many more profitable guys. College football, five percent plays over the last couple of years. They do not come around often. So make sure you head over to wagertalk.com to Dave's page. And which one of these, Dave, are you leaning towards here? I'm gonna play the spot and take Pittsburgh. Um it's there for them. If they if they can't get the job done against North Carolina, then they don't deserve to have a chance to play in the ACC title game and get to the Orange Bowl. But, or Orange Bowl, I should say. My, sorry, my New England accent came flying out there. Um, <laughs> despite the fact that I haven't lived there for like 40 years, you'd think I'd get, get rid of it by this point. But uh, look, North Carolina is good enough to hang in. But I, I think the spot just completely favors Pittsburgh. And late in the season, I play spots. So I'm on the Panthers minus the points. All right, there it is. Pitt, it is, guys. So uh, college football, week number 11 underway. Uh, Old Miss here, plus two and a half. Uh, Ralph is leaning that way. Teddy leaning towards the over, Georgia and Tennessee. And Dave likes uh, Pitt tonight here, laying the six and a half as a lean. And again, guys, don't forget, visit all three of these gentlemen over at wagertalk.com. A lot of ways to make it a profitable Thursday heading into the weekend. And those three day, seven day, 30 day all access packages, all plays, all sports. Not a bad way to go. All right, hit that bell in the upper right-hand corner. Make plans to come back and join us again tomorrow as we head into the weekend here with another edition of College Football Daily. On behalf of Ralph Michaels, Teddy Covers, and Dave Koken, hit that bell, guys. We appreciate the time. Good luck with your plays tonight. We'll talk to you again tomorrow. Sign up for the free WagerTalk text club to gain access to free plays and exclusive discounts. Just text WagerTalk to 33222 to sign up and get a $10 coupon to use on wagertalk.com.